Hello everyone, this video is to show you how to set up Intel QuickSync for your OBS Studio streaming setup. This is a setup that's targeted to people who use a single system instead of a dedicated machine for their streams. And you may have some resource issues with games that are very, very CPU and graphics card hungry so that using the software encoder is uh, not possible to do that on the best quality setting that you want without impacting the game and using NVENC if you have an NVIDIA card or whatever uh, on your main card you're gaming with is not leaving much resources there either so what can you do? mostly your motherboard has an onboard graphics card, mostly recent gaming rigs, MSI, ASUS, have an Intel based graphics card on board, which nobody ever uses. So most of the time it's just turned off and to save resources or not to have some hassle, you just disable that usually in the BIOS. So in this video, I'm not going to show you the BIOS because I want you to show OBS Studio. I'm going to show you where you can do your QuickSync stuff. Basically, depending on your motherboard brand and model, you have to go into the BIOS settings and make sure you enable the onboard graphics and still leave your PCI graphics as being the main graphics board, which you will be gaming with. So this is my OBS Studio with a regular scene. And I will go directly to the settings. And the quick sync can be chosen in the output setting. Now everything is grayed out because I'm currently recording. Unfortunately, I'm recording using NVENC. And despite being recording and not streaming, um, it's still disabling this here. But basically, when you click this top option, which is now grayed out, you would have the choice between quick sync NVENC or whatever AMD or the software encoder. So here you pick quick sync. For target usage, I always select quality because quick sync is well quick sync. It's not quality sync. So you have to take whatever you can from the ground up, take quality instead of balance or speed. Balance would actually uh, allow to have a bit less quality and optimal performance in encoding and speed would be really going for the performance. As you're not using the Intel card for anything else but encoding, you have plenty of resources left, leave it on quality. The profile, if you're a Twitch streamer, leave it on high. What the profile actually does, it defines what are all the different little algorithms that the encoder can use in H.264 to make the image uh, still look nice while still compressing as much as possible. So there are, over time, uh, the guys that uh, design these encoders, find uh, new tweaks and tricks, and now we will do something on the block size and this and that. And the profile uh, enables tricks that are of a higher evolution, and that just enables you to have a better compression while still get, getting quality. So the highest is the best. Um, all the devices on which, if you would be recording a video and you want to play it on an old smartphone from several years ago or an old tablet. You may have to go back to baseline because it will probably not support the higher uh, encoding tricks for uh, decoding and viewing the video. But for Twitch, you can leave it on high. Keyframe interval also for Twitch, that's a uh, no-brainer. There is no choice. They only support two. Asking that you can leave it by default on four. That's how the uh, Intel encoder will actually go uh, in its uh, algorithm to do the calculation. The rate should be always constant bitrate, uh, CBR. Uh, that's also a prerequisite from Twitch, so you have no choice here. There are different choices if you would want to record using QuickSync, but if you want to encode for Twitch, you only have to use CBR. There is no other choice. That works. Then for the bitrate, I have it set up at 6,000 right now. Um, that is very, very depending on what kind of streamer you are, if you're an affiliate or not if uh, Twitch is actually re-encoding on the fly for you into lower resolutions for the viewers that have lower resolution requirements. So if you have so, you can have the highest bitrate that you can 
what Twitch will be supporting at the time and also take into account what bandwidth you have on your own internet line. There are many different videos talking about the bitrate. Uh, however, if you're a small streamer and you want to be accessible to many other people that will watch your stream without having buffering issues, the best is to go a bit lower here. Um, you could go to 4500, which I am using personally to switch at uh, 720p and 50 frames per second and still keep a very good quality. B frames you leave at 2, which will be the best compatibility issue with Twitch. And this is new in the uh, OBS Studio version 23. Content adaptive quantization didn't exist before. It allows us to do some more uh, advanced stuff within QuickSync to have a better compression. So besides the bitrate, this is actually everything you want to have to be uh, compatible with Twitch to uh, have the QuickSync quality as it best and uh, to have the better results. The bitrate your mileage will be probably vary uh, depending on your own internet line. So this should not be more than uh, half what your upstream line allows you to do. Take into account that this is if you're alone. If you live in a house with uh, family members that are using the internet line at the same time as you are and you don't have your router set up properly with quality of service settings and so on, you may have issues uh, there is a whole chapter about this, that's a dedicated topic, but basically keep it as high as you can whilst still being low enough if you don't want to exclude viewers, if you're not yet uh, a very big streamer and Twitch is not automatically re-encoding for you. So that's about it. And that wraps it up. Once you have this setup and you stream, you will no longer use your CPU or your main graphics card to do the encoding. It will be done by the normally unused Intel adapter that's on your motherboard and that will you allow you to uh, save lots on resources and uh, have uh, the best uh, gaming and streaming experience as possible with a single PC rig that is of course if you have a dedicated machine the best so far remains still the software encoder. So that is for people that actually have an Nvidia card that's not a 2000 series or any other graphics card as their main card. Currently, um, NVIDIA has issued a new graphics card generation, which is a 2000 series uh, graphics cards. And these ones allow for even better onboard encoding. That will have to be tested if there is some resource issues with the more modern and recent games that really use a lot of resources on the card. But so far, other streamers have been testing that and that looks much more promising. So this quick sync tip is if you have a non-NVIDIA or an NVIDIA 1000 or below series. If you have a 2000 series, you could use a new NVENC, which has a slightly better quality or a similar quality to this quick sync. And that's the last final word about this. So I hope you enjoyed this video and that this is uh, something that will help you out having a better stream quality resource management on your single PC rig. Thanks again for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.